It is finally time to add the last reptile to our reptile house in the Elm Hill City Zoo, the Nile Monitor. Today we'll build an indoor enclosure for this beautiful lizard inspired by its natural habitat and I really hope you guys will enjoy the episode. Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. And welcome to the Elm Hill City Zoo! Today we are adding the final reptile to the reptile house, the Nile Monitor. This is the last indoor enclosure that we'll build for this building and I am very excited for this. I loved building the reptile house but I am so ready to move to something else to build for some different animals, not only the reptiles. Okay, we did some breaks from building for them. But building all those indoor enclosures for this building made me realize how hard it is to came up, come up with different ideas for each and every enclosure. And I am so, so glad that after this, it will all be finished. Uh, there will be only one more episode of the uh, reptile house after this when we will be uh, just finishing the building, uh, doing the interiors, doing the corridors. I also thought of uh, adding like a little cafe inside of here. And I also need to finish uh, the back of the building. So the back facades and also do the roof and so on so this will be something that we'll focus on in the next episode. The enclosure for the Nile monitor is located just opposite to the Asian water monitor and this was the first reptile that we ever added to this building. Uh, I just thought that uh, adding those two lizards next to each other made sense uh, and uh, I wanted to make it look a bit more unique, a bit more different from uh, the uh, Asian water monitor. The Asian water monitors, they live in more like tropical climates so their, their habitat is really like lush with a lot of different plants and in here I wanted to utilize the fact that the Nile monitors have a very wild range. They live in Africa but not only in tropical regions, they live in more uh, arid climates as well. As long as there is water, like a river, they will be there and of course they live in Nile River. So uh, this is something that we are going for in here. Uh, this enclosure is uh, inspired by a lot of different terrariums that I saw for more arid uh, reptiles. Uh, but also by some of the Nile monitor habitats that I saw in different zoos online and I also recently saw one live in person uh, in Wrocław Zoo in Poland uh, so this is also something that we will take into consideration. Um, a lot of those habitats for the Nile monitor are very very small those are like typical uh, terrariums more than big indoor enclosures. Uh, I saw some bigger ones and uh, but here we'll definitely build something bigger not the one you know that is typical for them that can they can barely move around. Uh, unfortunately it is still happening in zoos that some of those big reptiles they still are getting those small enclosures and uh, I think that it'll, I hope that it will be changing over time uh, but this one of course it is still not enough when it comes to uh, the requirements of Planet Zoo because those are sometimes crazy uh, you won't see uh, such big habitats for uh, lizards for example as uh, Planet Zoo requires in real life zoos uh, but it will still be very big uh, and also it will be very like vertical because there will be like uh, rock shelves for them uh, there will be uh, like logs that they can climb on uh, the Nile monitors as well as the Asian water monitors they can actually climb on trees and different things unfortunately in the game they cannot climb I wish that it was added because I think that those animations could look amazing uh, just looking at them climbing on some trees and logs and stuff like this so we'll have to use a bit of our imagination here to actually portray like this water monitor uh, that will be living in this habitat using the whole uh, enclosure uh, because as I told you there will be uh, different opportunities for it to climb and it, actually there will be only one monitor living in here just as with the Asian water monitor I decided that those are probably more uh, solitary animals and they appreciate just being alone in such a habitat so uh, this is what I went for. 
Before I will talk more about the enclosure, I just really wanted to thank you guys for the amazing response to uh, the tour around the Finnish African section of the Desert Adventure Park. You guys really loved it. The comments were so amazing. Uh, this basically made my day and I'm so, so glad that so many of you are enjoying this series besides the Elm Hill City Zoo. So thank you for that. Uh, it is a bit on the longer side. It has more than an hour, but I I really wanted to show you all the backstage areas of all the different angles of different enclosures uh, and actually a lot of you uh, saw the whole video uh, so thank you for that because I can see that in the YouTube analytics that you have been watching it so thank you so so much and in case you guys haven't seen the tour of the finished African section or African village of the desert adventure park I will put the link down in the description and on the screen so you can go and check it out this video right here is uh, actually opposite it is more on the uh, shorter side uh, because I already had so many things prepared like I had the viewing windows uh, I know that I wanted to go for our normal like uh, rock walls in the back of the enclosure uh, I added uh, different types of uh, plants but still the ones that I am very familiar with so it was really easy and quick it actually only took me several hours to build this for me this is actually quick believe me or not several hours is like a very quick build uh, so this was really actually easy to build I was very surprised um, about how fast I was able to complete it while we are on topic on videos actually uh, I just wanted to tell you that next week there won't be any new video on my channel unfortunately I know uh, but I am going away for a couple of days I actually got tickets to see Adele in Munich uh, but this means that we decided to take a little trip with our friends like uh, for uh, just you know to visit some other cities on the way so we are going for example to Prague and uh, thanks to that I'll be able to visit the Prague Zoo finally it is one of the best zoos in the world and I wanted to see it for a, such a long time uh, so uh, yeah finally I'll be visiting it and of course I'll be adding a lot of pictures from my visit and also some videos maybe I'll do some shorts and reels and stuff uh, and you'll uh, be able to see it on my Instagram account so if you are not following me there I definitely uh, go and check out my Instagram the link is down in the description to all of my social media uh, I have almost like seven and a half thousand followers on the Instagram so thank you guys so much this is amazing this has never been my main focus uh, the main focus is always YouTube so this means so much that so many people are still following me there on Instagram as well so uh, if you like to join uh, you are so welcome uh, to I post there my uh, zoo trips but also of course pictures of the habitat and I always picture uh, and I always post the new thumbnails from the videos so if you don't want to miss any videos and you are more active on Instagram for example you can go and check out how, when I am uploading new videos here so uh, that's always fun right and then maybe if I will have time in Munich I will also go to Munich Zoo I really hope so we will see but uh, yeah those are the two totally different new zoos that I haven't been to so I am super excited excited about the next week and I will see Adele which is amazing I really wanted to see her for a long time uh, last week I actually saw Taylor Swift in Warsaw so two big names in such a short period of time uh, really exciting times but yeah let's go back to the video because I'm totally drifting off the topic so you guys could see me using something new when it comes to the rock formation that we did in the back uh, I basically added some trees and I blended the trees into uh, the rock walls uh, those are the M M Pingo trees I believe from the uh, conservation pack and this is something that I actually saw a, a creator do on Facebook uh, I think the name is Akahanten, Akahanten. I am not sure. I don't remember. Sorry for that. Uh, but I will definitely put the link down to the to their workshop and to this item because those. Uh, this is such a clever idea to use those tree trunks as rock formations. They look amazing, and I was super inspired by this. And I decided to add it for some some added texture. And also they have this really cool color for uh, the more arid looking uh, rock. So I 
really decided that it makes sense. I also created like a little like cave uh, thing, like a rock formation for the one nail monitors to climb on, but also it creates like a little cave in there and I will put their uh, heat lamp for them so they can go there and just chill and you know heat themselves if they want to. They are reptiles, they are cold blooded so uh, they require a heat like generator in their enclosure. I am so mad that they are snow like enrichment item with the heat lamp. It is such an easy thing to do. Only like put a heat lamp in your enclosure and then the animals will just go there and lay under it and it would look amazing. It would be so realistic and I don't know why they didn't think of that because we actually have something about like this in Zoo Tycoon 2 for example even. There was a heat lamp and in here we don't have it. I am not too sure if I haven't spoken about this already in one of my videos but sorry if I am repeating myself. Uh, I It is so hard to remember what I told you guys in one of my videos and what's, what I didn't. Especially when I'm in this flow of recording my voiceover. Sometimes when I finish I don't even remember what I told you in the video so I have to go through it again and just check if I'm not talking about some stupid things or something very boring. I of course added a lot of plants to this habitat but a plant that really stood out for me in here and the plant that I sort of forgot, forgot about was the Kaha Kaha plant uh, from the Oceania pack. Uh, I just love to turn it up upside down so you can see those roots or those dry leaves. I don't know exactly what it is uh, but if you will turn it upside down it, it sort of looks like a re like a dry grass of a really interesting texture i used to use it a lot after the uh, oceania pack was out and i sort of forgot about this so i am so glad that i was going through different plants and i found it and i decided to use it here because i think it looks really cool of course the nile monitors will have a big water section they love water they hunt in water and stuff uh, so uh, almost half of their enclosure of its enclosure because there will be only one uh, will be just a water section but I still wanted to decorate around it so there will be some rocks there will be some smaller plants uh, I just didn't want to make this habitat too lush so uh, maybe it's a bit like lower on the details than the previous ones but this was all by purpose this was meant to look more like a bank of the African river not something like an Amazon forest or anything like this in the previous enclosures I used to do like a skylight uh, because I wanted to have more light inside of there. Uh, building indoor habitats in Planet Zoo is uh, sort of challenging because you don't have this much light in there. Also, uh, building buildings and interiors in general is just a bit different than building things outside because you are dealing with those very difficult shadows and difficult colors. A lot of different pieces look totally different, a lot of, a lot of different plants look totally different in the inside of the enclosures, uh, of the indoor enclosures, if you don't have like a a window or uh, anything like this and on the other hand hand side it's not always dark like you cannot make the habitat or the indoor of the enclosure completely dark uh, so uh, that is always a bit challenging and in here uh, I also struggled a bit with that because I think that this enclosure is a bit too dark and if I would like to make it a bit like a nocturnal exhibit or anything it is still too light so yeah not the best when it comes to the light for example as the ones for the crocodiles because we had a lot of natural light coming through the glass ceiling or skylights uh, but uh, still I am very happy with how it looks I really like this enclosure and I think it suits like perfectly to an animal like a Nile monitor also the thing that I wanted to mention because you guys are asking uh, me this in all of my episodes when it comes to uh, me talking about the last reptile uh, for this house uh, you are asking me if I'll be adding the Komodo dragon here and the answer is no but I'll be doing something better for them because I'll be building a separate facility for the Komodo dragon only uh, and this will be inspired by one of my uh, previous zoo trips I really liked a building for the Komodo dragon and I want to build it somewhere near the reptile house so this is something that will focus on I think a couple episodes after the tour of of the uh, Elm Hill City Zoo. Okay, and with that being said, this is the end of the speed build part of this video. Let me meet you in a second for the cinematic shot so I can tell you a bit more about the habitat. 
So the final enclosure for the reptile house is finally finished. This is our enclosure for the Nile monitor. A bit more arid looking enclosure compared to the ones that we've built before. The Nile monitor of course needs some water and in here it has like a quite big pool that it can enjoy. It also has a cave with the heat lamp and it has different areas that it can climb on for example the rock shelf or the logs or different branches that it has in here. Uh, I believe that in real life it will actually use the entire rock wall in the back uh, so that would be so cool to see. Unfortunately in Planet Zoo it doesn't work like this. Uh, the whole enclosure is a bit similar to the ones that we created for uh, the dwarf caimans and the spectacle caimans. This is a bit less water, it is also a bit smaller, but in the end I really like how it has turned out and I really like that it is a bit different from other enclosures in this zoo. Okay guys, this is basically all that I have for you in this episode. Make sure to tune in for the next one to see the finished reptile house with all the corridors or the interior done and also we'll be adding a lot of exhibit species to this animal and decorating the exhibits so if you are struggling with the uh, ideas for this uh, i have some <laughs> so join me for this and we'll build something cool uh, if you enjoyed today's video please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already ring the bell if you want to be notified every time i upload a new video like this give this video big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and of course leave me a nice comment and tell me what you think about the habitat. If you'd like to become a sponsor of the enclosure uh, of the Indian Hill City Zoo, uh, you can do it by becoming a member of the channel with the join button down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys! <laughs>